Hello guys, once again welcome back to another Android app development tutorial. In the last video we already learned about how to capture an image using an inbuilt camera app. In that video, the data received from the on activity for result method is a bitmap that is a very low quality image suitable for only icons. So if you want to get a high quality image from a camera app, uh, you have to specify a valid file for saving that image. So in this video here, I am going to show you how to capture an image using an inbuilt camera app and how to save that high quality image into a file. So we can begin with a new Android Studio project. So here our project is ready. So first thing we have to specify the camera feature and the needed permission inside Android manifest.xml. So open Android manifest file. So if the camera is the essential part of your app, you have to specify the camera feature inside manifest file. So use as feature, specify the feature name using Android name attribute. Here it is android.hardware.camera. So camera is deprecated, but we can still use that one. So now if it is the essential part of your app, you have to specify and or required into true. This will restrict your app on devices with the camera in Google Play Store. So, so here we are going to save the high quality image into the private storage space of this application. So if you want to write a file into the private storage space on, for a, on, a, on an application, for Android version 4.3 and lower, we have to specify the write permission. But it is not required for Android version higher than 4.3. So we have to specify the write external, uh, write external storage permission. But this is needed only for Android version 4.3 and above. So we can specify that one using Android maximum SDK version into 80. Okay. So here we specify the feature and permission. So if you save an image into a file on Android version 7.0 and above, that may cause an exception called the file URI exposed exception. So in order to avoid that exception, we have to specify a file provider with a valid file path. So first thing we have to specify an XML file with a valid file path. So here I'm going to create a new Android resource file. I name it as file path. Uh, now specify the resource type into XML. Okay, change the root element into path. So inside this path attribute, we have to specify the external path. Here you have to specify name and path. So here I name it as my images. Now we can specify the valid path name. So we are going to save that image into the folder called the employee. In that folder we have another folder called the data. Now we have to specify the application package name. So we can get the package name from the manifest file. So copy your application package name. Uh, in that package name, we have another file called files. In that one, we can save the image into a folder called uh, pictures. So you have to use the same path name, otherwise your app may crash. Okay, so this is the uh, file path for saving that high quality image. So now we have to specify a provider inside the manifest. So in within the application tag, specify a provider. Here you have to specify authorities and name. So first here I'm going to specify the name for the provider. So here I specify the name as Android support before content file provider. Now we can specify the authorities. So here I specify the authority as com.example.android file provider. Okay, so we need the authorities later. Authority string resource later. So now Add some other attribute called exported into false. Now grant the URI permission into true. So for the provider, we have to specify some metadata. So now add some metadata. Specify name, Android name into Android support file provider path. Now specify the resource name, 
that means the XML file that represents the file path it is available inside XML file XML directory and uh, file name is file path okay so this is the provider so now we can create the user interface of the application so connectivity may include XML so I change the root element into linear layout specify orientation to vertical so here I'm going to add two buttons specify the first button this is for capture image specify on a ground grid method called the capture image now specify the gravity okay so now here I'm going to add one more button for display that image display image now uh, implement these two methods inside the activity activity class name class file okay so here uh, we have two method for capture image and display image so first thing we have to specify a unique file name for the file image file first here I'm going to create some sling resource sling variable uh, current image path current file current image path into null okay so now here I create a method that return a valid file for the image so here the return type is an object of file so here I name the name the method as get image file so for create a unique name for the file we are going to use the timestamp so create a variable called uh, timestamp new symbol date format specify the date format year month date now specify hour minute and seconds dot format new date so now create a string for the file name and name it as image name it is jpg jpg iphone timestamp okay so this is the unique name for the image now create <coughs> Now, specific, now we have to get the storage directory so here we are going to use the private storage space so you have to use the get external file directory method okay now we can create the image file and image as image file so file dot create temporary file first one is prefix here it is image name second one is suffix it is dot jpg and final parameter is the storage directory so this may cause an exception so this method throws IO exception Finally, for display that image, we save the image path, image file into get absolute path, and finally return that image file. Okay, so now we can capture an image using an inbuilt camera app and save that image into the file path. So we need an intent for start an external application. I name it as camera intent. A new camera intent, new intent, media store dot action image capture. So now we have to check whether there is an activity capable of handling this intent. So if camera intent dot, uh, I think resolve activity, resolve activity get package manager is not null. That means there is an activity capable of handling the camera intent. So in that case, we can receive the image file. So first create a variable called image file into null now we can get the valid image file by calling that method called get image file so here we have to handle that exception so you set like catch block so first check whether the uh, we successfully create that image file or not so if image file not equal to null in that case we can start the external camera app so first thing uh, we have to pass the uh, image path for saving that image so create a variable called image URI so file provider dot get URI from file URI for file first parameter is context second parameter is the authority string so we have to we have to use the same authority string specified within the provider in XML file so here is the authority string I copy that string you have to use the same string So specify here so 
sorry for that copy one more time okay specified it here and final parameter is the file it is image file okay so now we can attach this URI to the indent so camera indent dot put extra a media store dot extra output now specific now pass the image URI now we can start that activity so we need some request code so create some integer variable private private static final int I name it as image request initialize that one with the value 1 okay now we can start activity for result first parameter is the indent second parameter is the image request okay so this will start an external application and save that high quality image into the file path we provided okay now here i am going to create another activity for display that image so here i create another activity i name it as display display image so in that activity here i am going to place some image view i change the root element into relative layout now place an image view with width and height into match parent now specify a padding for the image view for db specify an id for it i specify that one into m image view okay now go to main activity so when user click the display image we have to start the newly created activity so create an indent for that one so display image dot class so now uh, we are going to pass the high quality image path as an extra field in the indent now start the activity okay so now in the target activity create variable for the image view now initialize that variable so now create some variables for bitmap bitmap factory dot decode file get indent dot get x class key for that one into image path now set the bitmap on the image view okay so now we can test our application so i run the project so now the application available on this virtual device so try to get capture some image so here i open some external application <coughs> capture an image okay so now we can display that image so here we have a high quality image so now we can check whether where, where the image is saved in that device so here is the we can check the file path so it is available on the android data package name files picture so we can check that one so here i open the file application go to the external storage so we save that inside a folder called android so here is the android folder that contain a folder called data and we have to find the package this is the package name and in that one we have a folder called files pictures and here is the image so this image is available only for your application. So this is how we capture a high quality image using an external camera application.